ladies and gentlemen, please welcome into the ring from Edmonton, Michael Frontier. For the, for the second time on Box Nation, here is Michael Frontin. Born in Mauritius, he's a very good amateur. And three weeks ago, he lost over eight rounds to Dean Bird. Had a win a couple of weeks ago as well. And if you've not seen him box before, I'm telling you, he can put some nice moves together. He's up against Patrick Liam Walsh, Halifax lad tonight. Crowd's going to be against him. But I'd be very surprised if he doesn't give Walsh a little bit of an argument. Certainly there will be moments when he'll put his moves together and he'll make Walsh think. This is an eight-rounder. And Frontin, former Commonwealth Games silver medalist, 2006 lost out to Frankie Gavin in a bronze back in 1998 in Kuala Lumpur. Please welcome into the ring from Halifax, Liam Patrick Ross. Popular lad, to put it mildly. They've come here to watch him and they love him. Talk about having a little bit of pressure to perform. This is the sort of thing that inspires you. This is what you. This is part of what you're here for, Paul. Great little atmosphere, isn't it? This, this is what you want to do when you face Tim Pro. Send your local sports centre out and have everyone there watching you, all your friends and family. There's some crowd there. He's a real character. He's a professional rugby league scrum half. Represented Ireland as a rugby league player, Great Britain as an amateur, and now undefeated as a boxer. He had to make the choice. Am I going to do rugby league? Am I going to do boxing? First got into boxing just to improve his fitness. But he decided this is the sport for me, and here he is. Our right, next contest this evening is a three-minute round in the light welterweight division. Firstly, please welcome in the red corner. Wearing the red shorts, weighing 10 stone, 1 pound, with a record of 3 wins, 9 losses, and 1 draw. From Edmonton, London, please welcome Michael Frontin. And across the ring in the blue corner, with a record of 8 wins, with 3 coming by way of knockout. Wearing the black and white shorts, weighing also 10 stone, one pound. Please welcome from Halifax, the undefeated Liam Patrick Ross. Your referee charge of the action is Howard Foster, a dog who will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, lads, both on the rules, keep it clean, make straight away when told. Both of your heads, good luck to you both, touch gloves. Ladies and gentlemen, eight three million rounds. No relation to the other Liam Walsh. One of the Cromer boys, this is Patrick Liam Walsh, taking his father's name to make that difference. Comes from an Irish background. Good amateur, won 23 of 26, made his pro debut last year, and now looking for a ninth consecutive victory. Said his dad puts him through his paces as his trainer says he kills me in his cellar four times a week. Metaphorically speaking, needless to say, mar marries his fiance Sarah on December the 28th. He's got a little lad, Oscar, who's 21 months old, and he said that having the little boy arrived inspired him to knuckle down and earn some proper money, as he says. Definitely, you, you know that with a lot of fighters, they have a, they become a father and totally change your outlook on life it, it, it did with myself when you mentioned about the rugby you know it, it, what, a, what a tough game that is so you, you can't see this this kid being a unfit if the stereotypes are right because they're always fit the rugby lads anyway and b tough well he's got a colorful background to put it mildly seven years ago he uh, apparently beat up a drug dealer and was shot in some sort of revenge attack the assailant 
currently doing time for attempted murder, so he's got a story to tell, and I know there's one national newspaper writer who's up here, Donald McRae, who wrote that terrific dark trade book a year or two back. He's up here to do a big feature about Patrick Liam Walsh. It's going to be interesting reading. It will be. Let, let, let's hope the arrival of baby Oscar will mellow him out a little bit, keep him on a state and with the boxing. Never gone beyond six rounds. This is an eight-rounder tonight. And Frontin has got experience in going that distance. He's only picked up three professional victories in his uh, 14 fights. Not stopped anybody, but he's good technically, as you can see. Been the distance with Jamie Cox and with a Josia Lusigan, who's currently ranked number one by the WBC at light welterweight, so he knows how to box. He's got a shot, hasn't he, now? Losing him. I think so, yeah. I think he's got a shot, if I remember reading right. Well, his last, uh, his last fight certainly uh, got him some attention over in the United States, and Losing has mm. been waiting some time for that title shot, so yeah. let's hope he pulls it off when he gets there. He's been avoided. Front looks really comfortable, you can... You can tell, you know, he, he, he knows how to handle himself, certainly. He's in the journeyman mode, but he's got the top amateur career as well, so that'll stand him in good stead when he's when he's against these opponents coming through. He looks really comfortable when he's in there, and he's throwing nice, decent shots himself. Crowd really responding to everything that Walsh does. I do love hearing the local hero sort of uh, atmosphere. And when Glenn McCrory won his world title shot, yeah. when he's won his world title, what, 20 odd years ago now, even yeah. though he still tries to tell us he's about 35. <laughs> but uh, that was an amazing atmosphere up there yeah. in Stanley that night. They're very passionate, the North East lot, aren't they? And they're certainly passionate here for this lad, looking for his ninth straight victory. Team Walsh led by Dad Patrick. Fronten nice and cool and composed under pressure though. Yeah, he seems really comfortable when, when, when Walsh is coming forward, but you know, it all changes first round and nice when they got warmed into it and nice and fight opens up a little bit nice more. All the time with the gap. Don't get, don't get too right. Don't get too adventurous. Don't get too adventurous with your shots so early. Jump to that left and right cross your miles off. So a good opening round for Walsh. Fronting coming into this fight on the back of a victory two weeks ago in a ten-rounder when he outpointed Bridgewater's Dean Mills up for the vacant International Masters light welterweight title. Nice jab from Fronting there. He just got outworked by Byrne as much as anything. When he fought in on Botch Nation three weeks ago. Ball seems really tense and really tight. Every time he goes to try and throw, throw a good shot, he tightens up around his shoulders. Is that the nerves of wanting to impress? Could, could be, could be, could be being over eager. He's just been caught with a nice shot then. Front and throws really nice shot, and as I said, he's, he seems well schooled. He's had a good amateur career. He's, he's got lovely movement, he's, he's nice and slick, and he, he's throwing nice shots. Looking forward to hearing from Patrick Walsh after the fight, provided he picks up the win which this crowd would want. Because the fact he sold so many tickets certainly tells oh, that's a decent counter though from Fronting. The roar from the initial shot thrown by Walsh, but Fronting caught him with a little sneak left hand. Yeah, well, Walsh doesn't seem to be landing much, he's, he's throwing decent shots, but they don't seem to be finding the way home. Fronting's really comfortable. Hand over the top did find yeah. the target. Johnson working quite well off the ropes. Pressure is seeming to be loaded on by Walsh, but Fronton was able to throw two or three uppercuts to dis to discourage the local man.
really tense Walsh all up, up in the top of the shoulders before he throws any shots especially if you're watching from behind he really tenses up before he throws his shots so if you were in that corner the advice at the end of this round will you just relax just it? relax a little bit yeah, time let it flow and keep, keep the head moving because Fronton's not throwing too, too bad jabs himself he's throwing nice jabs keep the head moving relax a little bit that's it let, let the shoulders drop a bit very muscular physique, Walsh, very, very defined. That's better. <laughs> nice. That's nice, stepped aside and delivered a decent right hand. <laughs> Walsh back to his corner, Chris Aston straight in there to give the words of advice. I think Walsh may have just stole the round there at the end for me. That was a nice right hand, wasn't it? When he just stepped aside to give himself some room. Good movement, good footwork, and nice right hand, hand just slipping through. Right. Just, the only thing you're doing wrong is you're letting him out of the corner. But you got him here and you put him off, pushing him back into the corner, and that's good. Keep moving that head, Liam. Keep moving that head, chin down, snappy job. Originally got into boxing, Walsh for fitness to aid his rugby playing because he said he was always getting into scraps on the field and a fair few off it as well. Tells tell you a lot about how tough them rugby lads are doing a bit of boxing to, to, to complement the rugby. Just to up the fitness, eh? <laughs> Played professional for Wakefield, Salford and Keighley. Of course, here in Halifax, we're right in the middle of rugby league territory. Well, that second round should have settled him down a little. Should have. I think he's showing himself, and hopefully his corner will tell him the same, that when he does relax and try and get into a nice little rhythm and get the air moving and let his shots go rather than tensing up, he's having a bit more success. Came into the sport relatively late, pro debut only last year. And maybe the lack of amateur experience, perhaps that's one of the things that he's had to cope with. Yeah, exactly right. And, and an opponent like Front and someone who's had a good amateur pedigree, the, the, these type of fights are the ones that they fancy. You know, kids who haven't had much amateur experience, they, they, they'll take advantage of that. Fronten stepping in, trying to land a solid left hook of his own. Crowd imploring Walsh to move on to another level. Howard Foster is the judge here. That's a nice jab from Fronten, rocking back Walsh's head. A pretty evenly matched, aren't they, John? Well, Fronten gave a really good account of himself against Dean Byrne, I thought. And here again, he's certainly making Walsh think. It's a nice shot. Fronten takes it well, though. So much more important and useful for a young fighter or young in terms of fights. Walsh, 29 years old, but in terms of fights, so much more useful to go in against somebody technically good like this Definitely, than yeah. somebody who just you know, blow away in seconds. Yeah, you, you're going to learn a lot more in, in, in fights like this. And you know, he, he mightn't get as good sparring as this in, in his gym than the likes of Fronten, who's had a good amateur career as well. Fronten's not a bad kid at all. Walsh is a tough boy, though, you can see that, he's a hard lad. Yeah. You had that coming out here on a rugby pitch, you'd know about <laughs> it, little scrum half. Don't always look for the big ones. You know, I've, I've never been on a rugby pitch, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, honestly, I'll stick to the boxing. Stick to a nice, safe <laughs> boxing ring. <laughs> Chance of Walshy Walshy go up. Well, the crowd rapturous in their acclaim. How did you read that third round? Probably just give it to Walsh again. I thought I thought Front had a decent first round. 
And if he was going to turn it round, I think he, he needed to come out that round and put his foot down because the second was pretty even until the last little flurry at the end stole it from Fronten. So probably 2-1 for me to, uh, to Walsh. As that right hand, Fronten took it well there. Yeah, nice shot. Fronten nearly landed himself as well. It was nearly simultaneous, but nice right hand from Walsh. This eighth of this eight rounder. Walsh with his son's name on this on the band of his shorts, Oscar. Soon. I'm sure his uh, fiance Sarah will be here at ringside somewhere. I bet your nerves are gone as well. <laughs> Can't be easy being a partner and uh, watching your husband or your boyfriend or fiance or whatever in there fighting. I, my, my missus always tells me the same thing, you know, but it's, it's a case of. She won't miss it because she doesn't want to be at home waiting for the phone call, you know, and, and God forbid that anything bad happens, you know, it, she, she's there to be on the end of the phone, but I know I've got to sort of understand how it is with, with watching me brothers fight. A couple of oohs and ahs at ringside when Fronting landed that very solid-looking left hand. But Walsh is so much better when he lets his hands go and just, just relaxes and let it flow. Listen to me. Howard Foster not standing for any nonsense. No, he is no nonsense. Howard Foster's a top referee. We're lucky in Britain. There's not, there's, there's hardly any bad referees at all, in my opinion. I mean, the crowd going berserk every time. Walsh loads up, but a lot of those shots are missing. That right hand did get through, but one or two of the counters are front and as well, making Walsh think. He really likes to whip in those hooks and uppercuts. He's been trying those uppercuts in the first bell, hasn't he, front and One or two have had success. He threw three in a row, did the, the, the round before the previous round on the ropes over by the blue corner. Entertaining scrap this has turned out to be. It's a really good, popular local ticket seller. In the sense that uh, the fans just hoping, dreaming that he can move up to the next level. It must be great for these fans because, there's, as you said before, there's not much boxing around here. And he'll be telling his friends and family stories about when he goes and boxes. And for once, you've got a chance to go and see him just down the road in a local show. So there's a lot of pressure on him to, to perform. You know, there's, there, there isn't many shows up here, and he's finally got one. And he's he's the biggest ticket seller by far, as you can see. One or two down the road in Huddersfield. You see him looking to aim, aim those those uppercuts that we were talking about. That right hand did get through from Walsh. Got a nice little step round to the side after he throws a shot as well. I've seen him do it both sides now to the left hand to the right, and he does it well. There it is. There you go. Fifth round coming up into the second half of the fight. Nice right hand from Walsh. Fronten took it well again, though. Yeah. 
He gave that last round to Walsh. Yeah, yeah, that's a way. So that's 3-1 on your card. Yep. I think Fronten had a decent first round. The second was was going pretty even until the last little flurry. And I think from then on, Walsh has started to put his foot down a little bit and Fronten started to go on into defensive mode again. Eight rounded though, so he could be saving, you never know. Fronten has been stopped by uh, Carl Place and Adil Anwar in previous fights. As I said earlier, he has been the distance with Jamie Cox, who's now a light middleweight champion, and gone the distance with a Josie Lusigan, so he knows the way around. Walsh just being forced onto the back foot momentarily. We've not seen too much of that. Shot again from Fronten, left hand. That's a slip there on those ropes. This is the best work from Fronten so far. Really, no crowd response at all from the punches that he is throwing, but there have been one or two decent ones in this fifth. Walsh's work rate may be dropped. Oh, it's a good Thanks solid right hand from Fronten. He felt that one. And the crowd hushed a little by that pull. I think it may have hurt him, that right hand. He landed with a decent, decent second right hand as well. Well, that's the most telling punch that Fronten has thrown so far in the fight. and you can see it visibly growing in confidence in this fifth round be an upset if he could pull this one off there again slightly anxious times these for Walsh. it's not really a good good time to give Fronten a bit of confidence as well the mid stage of the fight he's only got three to go now With him taking the faith as well, it could be interesting if he takes one or two more. Had a big effort in that round. Had some real moments, notably this. A nice right hand. That hurt Walsh. Timed it perfect. And then you said there was a follow-up shot the as well. Follow -up, just, just on the side of the head after the, the next shot that landed, and if he was shook up a little bit, it would have definitely got home again. Up close on his chest for this horse. Be interesting to see how he comes out this round now. Up close, Maybe a bit more caution. It could be. He's relying on a little layback, but his hands seem to drop as he does it, and he's been doing that from the first bell as well. With, as I said before, you know, I've said the time and again, throughout his well schooled and he's had a decent amateur career. So he could take a, could take advantage of of the lack of Walsh's. When you're when you're actually in a fight like that, Paul, you get clipped by a, a shot like that. As the fight unfolds after it, I mean, does it all blur, or would you remember the moment? Uh, it, de it depends. You know, I've, I've been caught in fights before. You know, obviously, my last one I got caught, I just didn't see the shot coming, and it's one of those things. You, you, your legs go momentarily, and there's nothing you can do. You can't seem to control them. Your head's fine, but you can't really control your legs much. But then. There's other fights where I've been caught. I've probably been caught with, with bigger, heavier shots than the one, ironically, the one that put me down. But you, you, you see them coming, you take them, your legs buzz a little bit, but then you're fine after 10, 15 seconds. It's the follow-up shots that do, do have an accumulation effect. Well, Walsh seems to have regrouped OK. He's not been caught as yet in this opening minute of the sixth round. Fronting just waiting for him to come in. Walsh will be getting into unknown territory. 
reiterates if he goes past this he's not been past six rounds before so psychologically maybe he was just thinking I'm not going to get rid of this guy I'm having to pace myself a little yeah it'll be, it'll be playing on his mind if he's never been the eight before it will be playing on his mind it, it, it will do with, with most kids but he seems a fit kid in front him went ten rounds just two weeks ago I think Walsh is just going to be a little tiny bit more cautious about what's coming back to him as he's coming in. He head hunting a bit too much. A little bit. He, he could. I think Fronten's open to the body. I think. He, I think Walsh landed the body shot in the second round, and Fronten didn't like it. A straight right hand to the body, and he, he's throwing it, Walsh. But it's only light. It's only a range finder to try and come up to the head again. If you put a bit more power in, you maybe have a bit more success. Crowd getting a bit more muted now. That's a left hand from Walsh that went to the body. It looks as though it might have been a bit low, but he got away with it. Now, will that just take the steam out of front him? trying to be elusive Good shot. not elusive enough to miss that one though well, he, he had the opportunity for him to come out and put his foot down a bit and maybe shade this round or maybe if he'd got a share of this round it'd have been an interesting fight for the last but big round that one for Walsh important for Walsh. that he did that good, good that he put his foot down and turned it round ok two to go that's all two to go ok Still Two to go. Chris Aston just uh, looking over his shoulder and catching a glimpse of the ring card girl to see if uh, it makes sure his counting was right. I you, think you, that's what he's looking at anyway. Yeah, I hope so. You'd be surprised how many how many times fighters even do that. I've done that myself. You forget the attack of the round and you look up at the card to see. As long as it's above the arms that you're looking at the, at the actual card and not the girl herself. Used to be an old heavyweight years gone by called Tex Cobb. Used to try and chat up the ring card girls during the fight. I remember boxing old Jay Abrams and he was doing it. He was, he was at the ringside, the ring card girl himself. He was he was definitely a character. He was in a sports centre like this as well. Seventh round. Unknown territory, as I said now. First time he's been past six rounds for Patrick Liam Walsh. You've got him ahead by four to two at the moment. Yeah, I think he's just done enough. He's, he's done, done the better work in most of the rounds. I gave front in the first round, and I gave him the one before last, fifth. Ooh, that's, that's a, a nice good shot. shot. Good shot from front in. And again, oh, two solid right hands. Walsh being forced to prove his toughness. Fronten will have been told, I'm sure, that he's got to win these last two rounds. Be interesting if he does win the last two rounds. Especially if, if the referee's scoring it the way I'm scoring it, then it will be interesting. He's landing some good shots, Fronten. I don't think it'll be a massively popular verdict with the oh. Halifax faithful. Definitely not. Nice That's better from, better from Walsh. And Fronten felt that one rocked back onto the ropes by the power of it. And Walsh senses it as well. He's comfortable on the ropes, Fronten. That's what's making it a good fight. Walsh thinks he's ahead and he's attacking when he's on the ropes. But Fronten's comfortable and likes being there and likes throwing shots while he's there. Likes to fight as the counter puncher, Fronten. The idea was good. It was, yeah. He's just got, he's just got to be a bit more aware of what's coming back at him. Walsh as he's coming forward, attacking. That's the only success Fronten's having when when Walsh is attacking and leaving himself open. That's really starting to heat up now in the seventh round. Good round. 
chance of Walshy Walshy go up. And Brompton still fancies this a bit. Caught again, you can see him looking over towards, I think he's looking over towards you, I think he was annoyed himself there. Walsh getting caught by a bit of a sucker punch. Trotton's a good counter punch, you know, and Walsh needs to attack, so it's always going to make for an interesting fight. This has been a good round. A smear of blood on the cheek of Walsh. Not sure where that's come from, whether it's a cut or whether it's come from maybe damage to his nose. And that's the end of the seventh round. A good round. Best round of the fight so far, I reckon, that one. It was, yeah, it was close as well. Now, how do you score that one? I'd probably... Uh, the better shots were landed from front, but the, the more weight and, and the more volume of shots were landed from Walsh, so I'd probably have to shade it towards Walsh. Quality punches, though. He's love to whip those hooks in and uppercuts. That was a lovely shot. Payback time. Yeah. Lovely shot. Good, good counters from front most of the time, but that, that was that was him playing a man his own game and a lovely counter of his own. Walsh. Good fight this one. Undercard fights you sometimes miss. And if you've never been along to a boxing event, well, this is the sort of thing. It's not just the headline show. You sometimes get fights like this as backup and they're good to watch. I think a lot of the fans, the high percentage of the fans are here for this fight, for this kid, especially Walsh, he's a big ticket seller. And it's an exciting fight and he isn't letting his fans down. More excellent action for you on Box Nation. <laughs> Terrific support for Walsh from his fans. And they want to see the big finish. As a reminder again from Fronten, solid right hand. Walsh forced to cover up. I was just going to say, he's just got to keep it tight this round, but he just doesn't seem the type. He's not He's not going to stand off and change his style. I think he wants to go for it and he's exciting and he loves fighting like this. He wants to be the aggressor, he wants to That's be the nice crowd pleaser. Shot. Could have done with a few more of those. Yeah, I think he's hurting with that shot. Fronten's wanting to hold for and keep him tied up. He's tying it again. Fronten working off those ropes again. Body shots again from Walsh, and those are hurting Fronten. Fronten into reverse gear when those punches started to thud home. He builds a really nice right hook to the body, Walsh. It's probably better than his left side, which is the one that caught him in the first place. There again, moved beautifully to the left-hand side, giving himself space for the punch. I think Fronten's definitely in survival mode now. I think he knows this, this, this round's more or less sealed for Walsh, and he's attacking the body very nice. Well, we move now towards the last minute. How impressed have you been with Walsh? Bearing in mind, I suppose, that he is a late comer to the programme. He is, I and mean, it's a lot of pressure on him being in his hometown. He's, he's, he sold the place out more or less by himself. And I'm impressed with his fitness. He's, he certainly showed he's got a good engine. He's, he's got a good work rate. He's still going for it now in the eighth round. And he, he's exciting. He'll certainly give these fans value for money. Maybe he can still force what would be a terrific stoppage victory. Yeah, right hand, and again, and again, and again. And now Fronten does want to back away. Yeah. He's starting to look disorganised and unsteady on, unsteady on his feet. Walsh wants to get it in this last 30 seconds. Can he finish it here? Big uppercut. Frampton just bent on survival now. And the referee's having a very close look at him. He's looking for the one big shot. If he just lets a few go, like he was doing early on, but he's having more success. That's better. Crowd imploring Walsh now to find a way to force a stoppage victory. Fronten holding on, experience showing, and he Very sees good. his way through to the final bell. Howard Foster raises Walsh's arm, 
and a terrific finish, and that is the end to this fight that his fans had hoped for. Look at them celebrate. They Send love us. that. Send his fans home really happy. That was a great last round and almost had them out of there. Well, Frontin had his moments, but Walsh, well, he looked terrific here in these last few seconds. He's an exciting fighter. It was a, I thought he was going to get the stoppage there. I thought we had a little bit more left in the round, but, you know, he's, he's certainly sending his fans home happy tonight, and they'll be, they'll be wanting to queue for the next fight. He'll be wanting more shows in Halifax now. So here we go, and in a moment we will get confirmation of the results. Tough fight for Frontin, but he played his part in making that a really entertaining fight. Probably won a couple of rounds, certainly as Paul Smith was seeing it here at ringside. Let's see how yeah, the referee Howard Foster's got it. The referee Howard Foster scores the contest 79 points to 74. The winner in the blue corner from Halifax, Ian Patrick Wolfe. Well, he only gave Michael Thompson the single round. And a shared no, one. And a shared one, but pretty much as you saw it. Pretty there much. So there we are. The fans love it. And Walsh gets win number nine. And what a crowd pleasing end to that fight. Well done, John. Well done, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. They love that one here at the uh, Northbridge Leisure Centre in Halifax and goodness me that fella did sell a load of tickets tonight and um, when you see a fight like that uh, uh, Steve it, uh, it warms your heart really because Frontin paid, played his part in it as well well Frontin's experience we saw it a few weeks ago on Box Nation when he gave Dean Byrne kittens I know Dean Byrne had him box for a while but he still pushed him he made Dean Byrne lunge he made Dean Byrne miss this kid is relatively inexperienced you know 29 years of age now only a year as a pro and we know about the rugby league story there's plenty of rugby league stories we don't know about he's also shot remember a few years ago for attacking a heroin a heroin dealer but th this is some good this is some good stuff from 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 uh that was some from fronting front isn't it yeah. and and it, it showed that walsh i mean he, as well as being that, resilient yeah. as being very very fit he can take a that, shot that's the right hand that. he was hurt yeah. by that as well fifth round and the seventh round he was hurt by right hands he took him back and then you know a lot of fighters would think right i'm leading i'll just get, I'll, I'll coast through this last round no he went for the stoppage now, the, that, big, the big thing is here, and you can see there's over our shoulder, Jim, there's an exit. As you can have a look, there is an, and, and Stevie napped this about 20 minutes ago during that fight. He went, you know what? If they all leave when he leaves, so we've got all you've got to do is... As long as nobody leaves out there watching Box Nation, it doesn't matter. So we've got Derek Chisora <laughs> coming up and, of course, our Commonwealth <laughs> light heavyweight, top of the bill as well. But it just shows what, what a big figure uh, he is here I, I, in this city. And listen, he's been a rugby league player. He's turned pro very, very late. He's 29 years of age. He's a man in a hurry. Oh, he's a man, and we'll have him back on Box Nation every yeah. week. I mean, he sells tickets. It shows there could be... You could build a star in this area. You know, like, there hasn't been a big star from the West Yorkshire since Henry Walton. Perhaps this guy's going to come in there. OK, let's find out a bit about uh, a bit more about him now. Here he is with John. Congratulations. The crowd, the crowd loved it. What a last round. I, I always get good support. It's really good. I mean, I told... Three to four hundred tickets this time. I do it all the time. The, the company's here next fight, exciting fight, and the, I think they got one there. It was a tough kid. It, it, it made it awkward for me at times, but I had to keep keep focused and keep on him. Really, it was tiring to watch him. I should have really, I should have upped it a bit more. You know, I've, I've been training eight, nine weeks for this, ten weeks even, because with TV it got put back, and I just, I just kept on the ball, kept to it. Me and my dad trained hard. I loved it. Paul Smith was saying in those early stages that you looked as though you were just that little bit tense, as though you were yeah, looking, yeah, to, yeah. looking to please your fans just a bit too much. Well, that's it, you see, it's my hometown in Halifax, and you come out, you, you, want, you want to please your fans, they buy tickets, you know what I mean? And I come out, I come out all tense, and I just, my dad said, just relax, but I kept on him all the time, I knew we were tiring, and I nearly got him in that, he caught me with a good shot in fifth. He really did uh, catch you, didn't he? I took it, I'm fit, I'm a fit lad, I mean... I mean, anyone in country, really, I don't like calling out no one, you know what I mean? It's just, I train hard, and I'll fight anyone at 10 stone. Any, any, anyone out there at 10 stone, it's, I'll, I'll give him a good fight, because I'm dedicated. I'm ready. You mentioned your dad, Patrick. He's the one who puts you through your paces on a daily basis, isn't it? He certainly does. Yeah. I mean, in the cellar? In, the in, cellar, in, cellar, in yeah. his cellar at home, I mean. I mean well, he's he's <laughs> learning all the time, Liam. He's only, he's only been boxing seriously five years. And he's getting stronger and fitter all the time. My dad, my dad always says 75% of uh, boxing's fitness, and yeah. I agree. I mean, you can have all the skills in the world, but if you're not fit, you're struggling there. You struggle. 
and uh, he keeps he keeps on top of me. We have his arguments, you know, we fall out, but end it days, me dad and you know <laughs> we get on, end it days, yeah. this is what it's for. I love it. The crowd what? came, it brilliant. One last question. The crowd's here. You've been a pro rugby league player as well. You Set like this out, more? Yeah. Well, I enjoyed rugby at the time and uh, I've always done boxing really to keep myself fit. You know, my dad's always always got me chucking punches from an early age, and I mean, and, and with my boxing training, I was I, I fit at rugby, and, it, and it's gone through into, into boxing, really. And, um, yeah, just just keep bringing them. That was my first eight rounds at. I mean, I've done three six rounds. That was my first eight rounds. I want to move up to championship level. I want a belt, you know, for my son, Oscar. It's brilliant. Congratulations. It's yeah. going to be an exciting journey. Let's have a few more nights like this. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Island. Cheers. Irish, up the Irish. He's got family in Ireland. Cheers. OK, thanks for coming. He wants to take on all comers. I don't know how keen all comers will be to come and take him on here in Halifax. Coming right up, though, we've got Derek Chisora coming in a few minutes' time. Let's just have a final word from you, from you Steve Bunce, um, on, on what this fella might bring to the game, because he's got to do it quickly. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim, the, if they sold 900 here tonight and he sold four or 500, that's directly. He probably sold 700, to be honest with you. He will sell. If they can get 1,400 they in love here, seeing they'll people with, with all but, action, aggressive. That, this, that's, that's what sells tickets. Earlier on tonight, we saw a guy who was mimicking Tyrone Booz, mimicking Tommy Hearns, OK, and he sold uh, maybe 100 tickets. Here's a guy doing Ricky Hatton moves. There's a Ricky Hatton moves, and he sold seven or 800. Next time we come back here, we'll do 1,500 here. And I'll tell you what, we're only, I'll tell you now, we're going to have one more fight with him in Halifax because there's not a venue. They'll follow. We'll be in Leeds, we'll be in Manchester. That's guaranteed. We Look will, at them, we Jim. Will, we will keep an eye on him. He's made a very, very big impression in short time in the game.